Hi, I'm Sarah, and I have Graham here. Yeah, Graham here with me again. And today we're going to talk to you about stem cells, and it's more advanced of a topic, but I think you'll be able to get it. Okay. So once again, if you have any questions for me about the presentation, or if you're just curious what it's like to be a scientist working in the lab, or any sort of questions, maybe not even related to our presentation, you can have your email, uh, have your parents email me at sarah.gundy at nyagalway.ie. So I would like to understand what a cell is to begin with. Um, because we're going to talk about a special kind of cell today called a stem cell. And so you can think of cells like a brick in a Lego. Um, mm. Because cells are like Lego that kind of stick together to make up bigger things in your body. And so you can see in the diagram here, uh, you start off with a cell and so you glue a whole bunch of cells together and a whole bunch of cells glued together makes up what we call a tissue. Okay, and then you can have a whole bunch of tissues kind of built and glued together and more and more tissues make up what we call an organ and there's different area, organs in your body. Graham, can you think of any? off the top of your head? Your maybe? heart, your brain. Yes, your heart, your brain, your liver, your pancreas, they're all organs made of tissues which are made of cells. And then you can go up even one more level and have entire systems which are made of organs. So you've probably heard of the digestive system, the cardiovascular system, the musculoskeletal system, and these are all made of organs that are connected to one another. And then the final level is all these systems make up an organism, which is me, which is you, which is Graham. Yes? Okay. So cells are the smallest kind of building blocks that make up the bigger areas of your body. So you can think of them, like I said on the previous slide, like a little brick of Lego that stick together with other bricks of Lego to make up tissues, which make up organs, which make up systems, which make up the whole organism. And cells, uh, there's three types. And so you have young cells and then they kind of get a bit more mature and you can call them like teenage cells. And then you have kind of the adult cells. Okay, so cells kind of advance, and I'll explain this later on in the presentation. And as a cell gets older, it, it kind of gets stuck as a certain type of cell, the older it gets. And as a cell gets older, it can lose its ability to change or what we call regenerate. So in the next few slides, I'm going to explain to you what I mean about regeneration. So stem cells are a special kind of cell uh, because they can do two things that not all other cells can do. The first thing they can do is they can make copies of themselves. Uh, they can multiply themselves and not all cells can do this. Um, it's a very special quality to have for a cell. And the second thing stem cells can do is they can make other types of cells. They can actually turn in to not just one type of cell, but like 10 types of cells, which is amazing because other cells in your body don't have the ability to do that. And we need these stem cells uh, because they replace damaged or dead cells in the body. And we hope we can use stem cells uh, to treat diseases in the future. And that's why you might hear about them uh, in the newspaper or on the news. It's because scientists are 
working with them a lot and trying to use them to help heal people. What other type of cells are there? Well, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. In this, uh, in this presentation, I'm going to probably show you about 28 different types of cells. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about regeneration, and regeneration is the ability of an animal's cells to make new body parts, even when they're an adult. And there's a special animal that can do this, and that animal is called a newt, which is a type of lizard. And he, this newt can regenerate or regrow an entire arm or leg within seven to 10 weeks. And believe me, not all animals can do that. Uh, Graham, if I chopped off your arm, would you be able to regrow a new one? No. No, no. Don't try that at home. Okay, and only special animals can do that, like the newt. And you can see pictures of um, the growth cycle here of the newt uh, getting his arm chopped off. Uh, so if you look over after the poor newt has his arm chopped off, after one week, there's only like this little stub here left. But then if you look after three to six weeks, you can see this little arm getting longer and then by week through six or nine, uh, the whole arm has grown back. Isn't that incredible? I wish I could do that. Um, so this is an example of some animals that can do that. And some animals can regrow some things, but not other things. Um, for example, um, they can grow new skin or like the next creature I'm gonna show you, they can even grow new heads. Are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't sound that excited. Say, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, so you're probably wondering, how on earth can an animal regenerate a whole head? Where's the animal? Well, that's on the next slide. I'm gonna tell you how it does it first. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. So when an animal is developing or growing in the mom's belly, most of the cells turn into one particular type. For example, uh, cells, they can become blood cells or heart cells or bone cells. Um, but during this development process, there's some stem cells that don't turn into anything and they just kind of stick around, okay? and they don't become what we call specialized. Okay, they kind of are still a blank slate and uh, they're left behind. And which is really good uh, because some of animals, they use those leftover stem cells uh, when they're an adult to regenerate lost or damaged body parts. Uh, but in order for these stem cells to do this, uh, the cells need to get the right signals from the rest of the body. So some animals have these right signals, but some animals like us, we don't have the right signals to tell our stem cells uh, to grow a new head on our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. It's only special types of creatures that can do that, okay? Here's a special creature I've been telling you about the one that you can chop off his head and it'll grow his head back. And this guy's name is Hydrocynthia. And we also call him snail fur. And I don't know if any of you have seen hermit crabs, like on the beach or at the aquarium. So what I have over here is a picture of a hermit crab. Okay, here's my little hermit crab. And I'm not actually talking about the hermit crab. I'm talking about the little furry things growing on the back of them. Okay, so you see those white things on the shell of the hermit crab? That is the hydrocyndia, okay? Not the hermit mm -hmm. crab itself. So if we look up close at one of these pieces of fur or hydrocyndia that's growing on the back, okay, down here, uh, you can see the hydrocyndia up close, okay? Now, if we were to take take a scissors and chop off that guy's head, okay? At day three, 
the poor guy doesn't have a head. But if you leave it a few more days, you can start to see its head grow back. You see that? So on the last picture, you can see uh, the antenna started to grow back. Okay, so he can regenerate that head and he does this with his stem cells within 72 hours. That's pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. So these hydrocyntia, they have the correct, what we call genetic recipe for regenerating their heads. And what I mean by genetic recipe is that special genes within their DNA get switched on, okay? And because they get switched on, uh, our body sends signals to the stem cells and tell them to go, hey, fix that guy's head, okay? And the stem cells hear those signals and they start to move to the area that needs help, which in this case is the poor guy's head that's been chopped off. So in the next slide, I'm gonna show you a video of Yay. the stem cells going into the hydrocinia's head to regrow it. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah, exciting stuff. So I have a video of some stem cells uh, which are dyed in green and you can see one circled in a white circle that I want you to focus on as I play the video. And you can see these cells starting from the bottom of the hydrocinia and moving their way to the top towards its head as I play the video. So you can watch that stem cell and it's traveling up to its head because it's received the correct signals and it wants to go regenerate that poor hydrocyndia's head. Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So I've taken that video and we've had some snapshots here so you can see in the first picture over on the left, that's the hydrocyndia and the stem cells are in green before the head gets chopped off. And then if you move over one picture uh, to picture number two, uh, the head gets chopped off. And then we move over to picture number three and you can see the green stem cells are kind of at the bottom of the hydrocynthia. And then after more and more time goes on, in picture number four, you can see those green stem cells have moved up to the top to help regenerate a new head. Stem cells are found all over your body and they can turn into different types of cells, which you can see in the picture I have here in the slide. Uh, so you have stem cells in the middle of our picture and they have the ability to change into like tens of different types of cells like muscle cells, blood cells, nerve cells, heart cells, which we refer to as cardiac cells, liver cells, and even cells in your intestines. So they're special cells and as long as they receive the correct genetic recipe, uh, they can turn into uh, one of different many types of cells when the body needs them to. Stem cells have two jobs. And so the first job they're able to do is they're able to self-renew, which just means they make copies of themselves, which is a special thing for a cell to be able to do. Not all cells in your body are able to do that. Uh, for example, the cells on your cornea, if they get scratched, that's it, they're done. Um, but stem cells are very special because they are able to multiply and make more cells. And the second job that they can do is what we call differentiate. And I know it sounds like a long word, and a difficult word, but it, it just means that stem cells are able to turn into a specific type of cell and I'll explain that in the next few slides. Um, but there's one important thing to remember. When a stem cell 
turns into a specific type of cell, like a cardiac cell or a liver cell, and it loses its ability to make copies of itself in general. Uh, so in other words, once a stem cell differentiates, it generally loses its ability to self-renew. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna explain this uh, with the concept that you might know about, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, Graham, does that guy look familiar to you? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I hope most of you have heard of Pokemon, and because you can think of stem cells like Pokemon characters. And so I've taken one of the most famous Pokemon character uh, called Pikachu. You've heard of Pikachu, right, Graham? Doll. Doll, yes. And so some of you might not know that Pikachu doesn't start off as Pikachu, okay? He actually starts off um, in kind of a baby form over here uh, called Pichu, yeah? And that's like a stem cell, okay? Um, Pichu in this form isn't very strong, right? But he can evolve into kind of a stronger version called Pikachu. And then he can evolve even further to his strongest form called Raichu. So he kind of gets stronger and stronger uh, the more he evolves. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. I knew you'd like that. You can think of stem cell lineages or uh, different types of cells that stem cells turn into, like Pokemon characters, right? Okay, so here's an example of cartilage cells. So when you're a baby, in your mother's belly developing, uh, you don't just automatically have cartilage. No, the cartilage starts off as a stem cell, which we call a transitory chondrocyte, like this baby stem cell over here on the left. Okay, here's our baby stem cell. And he gets a little stronger and he turns into the teenage version which we called our articular chondrocyte. And don't worry about the pronunciation of these words, okay? It's just that you know there's a baby cartilage, a teenage cartilage, and then when it's in the strongest form, it's called just cartilage, okay? So if you notice over here, um, the baby cartilage, he's very good at self-renewing and his power at self-renewing is very high but acting like cartilage, he's not so good at, right? So he has a very low differentiation power. But the older that uh, this cartilage uh, stem cell gets... It's just flipped. Yeah, um, it's just flipped. So once he gets to be an adult cartilage cell over here, he can't make copies of itself anymore, okay? So he has very low self-renewing power, but if you look here, his differentiation power is very high. So he's very good at acting like cartilage and he has very strong, tough cartilage. So do you see how stem cells are like Pokemon characters, Graham? Kind of. Kind of, yeah? Well, um, yeah. Yes, okay, good, good. So it's not just cartilage. Uh, there's other cells in your body that are like this as well. So this is the same thing that happens in your tendons. And we talked about tendons uh, in another video in the musculoskeletal system. And so a tendon is just that band of tissue that connects muscles to bones. But when you're a baby in your mother's belly, your tendons don't just magically appear. No, they start off as what we call mesenchymal stem cells. So they start off in the baby version. In this baby version, once again, um, it's very good at making copies of itself or self-renewal, but it doesn't really 
act like a tendon very well. No, 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 it's got to get a bit stronger. Okay, so it turns into a teenager, which we call a tenoblast, and then it turns into its adult form, which is called a tenocyte. And this tenocyte cell is really strong and very good at acting like a tendon. Uh, so it's got high differentiation power. But when it's in this form, it's very bad at making copies of itself. Yeah, so it's the same with blood cells in your body. And what I have here is a sample of a blood cell called a thrombocyte or a platelet. And this type of cell is found in your blood and causes the bleeding to stop when you have a cut. And another type of cell that this happens to are your skin cells, um, which make up the outer protective covering of your body. And this is also true of your muscle cells, okay? Um, your baby muscle cells are your baby stem cells and that make up your muscles are called myoblasts and they get a bit stronger until they actually form your, your tough muscles. And one you might not have heard about um, in a tissue in your body called a myelin sheath, it's a, kind of an outside layer on your neurons and it's a protective layer that allows signals to be transmitted much faster um, when the brain sends messages to the rest of your body. And then neurons are the same. And you may we talked about neurons in our other video on the brain. And these are cells that receive and transmit information in the brain to the rest of your body. And so neuron cells don't start off as neurons. No, no, no. They have to start off at first as neuronal stem cells, which turn into neurocytes, which turn into the final strong neuron cell. And then we also have bones. Everyone knows what a bone is, right? And so these bone cells start off as what we call transitory osteoblasts which turn into a bit stronger osteoblasts and which turn into the strongest version, which is called an osteocyte. And just notice um, how the self-renewing power goes down as the differentiation power goes up. That finishes off our talk about stem cells and regeneration. And if you want to continue the video, I'll show you how to play a card game uh, using the different stem cells that I just talked to you about. And you just download the card game and print them out at home. And if you want to finish up, uh, you can stop the video here. And if you have any questions for any scientists in the lab, or you have any questions for me about the presentation, uh, have your parents email me at sarah.gundy at nuigalway.ie. And so, say goodbye, Graham. Bye. We've created a card game for you to play and based on the stem cell information that we gave you during the talk. And you play this card game in the style of Top Trumps. So you download the lesson plan that's on the website and you print out the card game. And then you cut along the dotted lines and you sh will have 24 cards in the deck. So you will need to play this game with a partner and you shuffle the deck and half the cards go to player one and half the cards go to player two. And then in order to play, player one reads out the value um, from a category on the cards. So each of the cards uh, at the bottom of them will have a category, four categories here, and they're called self-renewal, relative size, differentiation, and relative number. Uh, so in the sample card, I have the cartilage cell. And uh, you can see his self-renewing power is very low. It's actually zero. And that means that 
He's not very good at making copies of himself, but you can see the number for the differentiation category is really high. And that's because car the cartilage cells are more mature and they're more specialized. And you can also see uh, the relative size category and cartilage has a pretty high relative size because that type of cell is a larger cell in your body. And then the fourth category is called relative number. And this is just the amount of that type of cell that's in your body. And you can see for the cartilage cell, uh, there's not very many cartilage cells in your body compared to other cells. And so the player uh, with the highest value wins and gets both cards and places them on the bottom of his or her pile. And the player with all the cards at the end is the winner. There are eight groups of cards and each group contains three steps of differentiation. Uh, you're going to have your baby stem cells, your teenage cells, and then your most mature um, adult cells. Now take note uh, of the different types of cells and what they specialize in when you're playing the game. Uh, so for example, each of these cards has a description here. So try to learn about what each cell does in your body. And also when you're playing, uh, notice the numbers in the categories. Uh, in particular, notice how the higher differentiated a cell is, the lower its self-renewing power will be. And also take note of the opposite, how the lower differentiated a cell is, the higher its self-renewing power will be. So that's the end of our activity. And we'd love to see some pictures of you playing our Steminator card game. And also remember, if you have any questions for a scientist or about our presentation or activity, have your parents email me at sarah.gundy at anygalway.ie.